let your hands rest on your legs. Close your eyes. We're gonna do three breaths. We're gonna inhale through the nose and blow it out of the mouth. So close your eyes, breathe in through your nose, only if you're not congested, and blow it out of your mouth. Let's try that again. And one more. Now just for a moment with your eyes closed, observe your body. Can you hear your heart beating or feel it? How's your breathing this morning? Just observe it. Now with your eyes closed, start to move in great big circles. Now if you're stiff, sore, tight, goodness gracious, they're tiny circles. Everything we do this morning, you're not gonna force it. You're just gonna move into these circles, loosening the body up. Change direction of your circles whenever it feels just right to you. Change direction of your circles and observe how that feels. Remember, there's no forcing. There's no judgments. There's only observations of your own breath only observations of your own body. So as you're moving yourself around in these great big circles, don't forget, don't count them. Let it be fluid and organic. And as you lean yourself slightly in front of the hips, you're gonna sway gently from side to side in the rhythm of the elephant. Breathe deeply to one side as you gently exhale out to the other side. Back and forth. Let your lower back soften. Allow each breath to be full and deep. Now we're here to play. So if you'd like to play with it, maybe pause at the top of the breath. Maybe pause at the bottom. Whatever feels just right to you. Allow this to become a moving meditation. Now it doesn't matter if it's the right side or the left side. Please take yourself to one side. Put your hands on each side of one of your legs. Take a breath in and on your own exhale, gently bow to where it feels safe. As you press that opposite hip downward to the floor, please let both of your shoulders relax. Let your head hang down. Let your neck be soft. Let your neck release. We're gonna take another deep cleansing breath in. And again, don't be bashful, let it out with a sigh. <sighs> 
shake your head a little yes, a little no. With an inhale, rise back up. Place your hands on both of the legs. Exhale here. Now take a deep breath in and again let it out with a big sigh. <sighs> when you're ready, turn to the other side. Breathe in and gently down just to where it feels comfortable. As you let your shoulders relax, let your head hang down so the neck can be soft. Let it release. Take a deep breath in. Let it out with a great big sigh. <sighs> Again, take a deep breath in. Let all the weak tension out. <sighs> Shake your head a little yes, a little no. Remember, don't do this if it hurts your neck. With an inhale, rise back up, hands on both of your legs, exhale here. Now take a deep breath in, draw both shoulders up to your ears. Exhale, pull them together and down your back. Let's try it one more time. Inhale, pull the shoulders up. Exhale, take them back and down. Place the hands on the floor in front of you. And when you gently bow, stretch the arms out long in front of you. Let your head hang. Let your shoulders relax. Let your neck be soft. Let it release. Take a deep breath in. Let it out with a great big sigh. <sighs> With an inhale, rise back up. Place the hands on both, uh, place the backs of your hands together. Lift them to the heart. Take a deep breath in. Open your arms out wide. Expand. Exhale, let your hands meet. Inhale, reach up tall. And when you exhale, gently take the hands downward to the heart. Namaste. Release your hands. Roll your shoulders around. Now, keeping your shoulders relaxed down, we're gonna gently drop our right ear towards the shoulder. Take your left hand out on the floor, move it back just enough. Now, take a breath in, relaxing your shoulders downward. We're gonna open our eyes, look out the left side of our eye up to the ceiling, lift your chin with the gaze. Take a breath and go. <sighs> Slow and gentle, rotate your nose, look downward at your right knee. Let the head hang. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Little yeses with your chin. Bring the hand back to the knee. Drop your chin deep into your chest. Little no, no, nose with your chin. And bring both shoulders to your ears. Lift your head up. Draw the shoulders back and down. Let's go to the other side. Drop your left ear towards the shoulder. Your right hand goes out on the floor. Move it back just enough. Open your eyes. Look out the right side of your eye up to the ceiling. Please lift your chin with the gaze. Take a deep breath and go. <sighs> now slow and gentle, rotate your nose so you're looking down at that left knee. Let your head hang. Take a breath. <sighs> Little yes, it's with your chin. Please bring your hand to your knee, drop your chin to your chest, little no, no, nose. Bring both shoulders to your ears, lift your head up, relaxing the shoulders back and down. 
folks are gonna meet each other on our hands and knees. Get there any way you want. Make sure you're comfortable. Make sure you have padding underneath your knees in case you need that extra padding. Your elbows are straight. So that soft side of your elbows is rotated forward. Toes are relaxed or rolled under. We're gonna start cat-cow. So when you're ready, we're gonna start with cat pose, rounding and tucking. And then you're gonna look forward and let your belly sag low to the floor. And you're gonna go back and forth from cat, move it into cow pose. Flow from your head to your tail. It doesn't matter if it's an inhale or exhale to either pose, just breathe deep and full. Back and forth from crown of the head to tail. Just a few times, softening the back, warming the fascia. Now the next time you have cat rounding, please hold the cat, pull your tummy in, your butt muscles are relaxed. We're trying to achieve that sensation that our head is being suspended by a spring. It's moving like a bobblehead. Little yes, a little no. And then press the hips to the heel. Reach the arms out long. Elbows are off the floor. Head drops between the arms. It touches the floor or it dangles. Take a deep breath here, reaching those fingers out long. Some of you can't get your hips all the way to your heels. Maybe you need a pillow between your thighs and your calves to make it more comfortable to you. And then with an inhale, you're gonna come all the way into table pose. If you needed that pillow between thighs and calves, please leave it there. And you're gonna gently walk your way a tiny bit over to the left side. You're gonna spread your fingers, your elbows are straight. And again, we're gonna start with cat pose and then we're gonna move it into cow. And if you've never done this before, it feels odd and cockeyed. After you've done it a few times, you realize, wow, I need to do this all the time. This is incredibly wonderful for any scoliosis, even the tiniest bit of one, a whisper of scoliosis or chronic. We all have some case of it because we always fade on one side. Now the next time we have cat rounding, we're gonna hold the cat. We're gonna let the head hang. Shake your head a little bit. Achieve that sensation of your head being suspended by a spring. That may take a decade. Now press the hips low to the heels. Reach the arms out long to the left side. Elbows are off the floor. You drop your head between the arms. Only if you want to. You could stay here if you wanted to, but if you want, put your right hand on top or close to your left hand. Only if you choose to twist the right side to the middle of the mat to get into that right scapula. Breathe there. Some people like to twist both ways. You know who you are if you want to. Now inhale. Let's lift all the way back up. Walk your way over to the other side, to the right side, unless you went the other way before. Spread your fingers, elbows are straight. Knees point to the front, fingers are pointing to the right. And we start with our cat pose and we move with the cow. Flow from head to tail. Please keep breathing and moving in it. Notice how it feels different on this side. And if you have not done this before or very few times, you think about it differently, don't you? Now, the next time you have cat, pull the cat, let your head hang. Pull the tummy in and upward, shake your head a bit. And then you're gonna press the hips low to the heels and reach your arms way out long to the right. Your elbows are off the floor. Drop your head between the arms. 
it's dangling or it's touching the floor. Now, if you choose to have a little more, left hand goes over on top or close to your right hand. If you want more, twist that left side body to the middle. Reach in. Inhale, lift all the way back up. Walk your way over to the middle. Once you're back at the middle, press your hips low to the heels, child's pose. Now remember, if you need that pillow between your thighs and your calves, put it there. Maybe you need something on the floor for your head, put it there. Arms could be under the head, stacked. They could be out long in front of you. If you're really flexible, maybe the arms are by your side with the palms up. Everybody's going to be in a little different position. Some people have their knees wide apart. Please get used to this pose. Please practice this pose many times a day. Please do this in your bed. This stretches your knees, your feet, unless you've blown your knees and you've had knee problems. Um, practice this quite often. Now we're going to come all the way back up, folks. Hands and knees, one more on the hands and knees. Spread your fingers wide. We're gonna roll your toes under. Take your right leg out and stretch long through the right leg. Press through the heel of your right foot. Now you're gonna look at that spot right between your thumbs. Pull your tummy in, your arms are straight. You're feeling that nice deep stretch in your calf muscles, that hamstrings. In fact, you're pressing so deeply through that leg, it's almost effortless on that left knee. Now we're gonna pick that right leg up, take it over to the left side, put your toes down onto the floor, press strongly through the heel of your right foot. Elbows are, are straight, and you're gonna look over to the top of your left shoulder if it feels good. See if you can see your right heel, but you may not see it. Breathe there and stretch through your right side body. Maybe you let your head dangle, shaking it a bit. Then take the leg back behind you, wiggle your ankle around. Please bend your knee and bring your knee home. Move your hips in big circles. Go one way, go the other way. We do this transition pose quite often because it stretches your knees, it stretches your hips, and it rebalances everything. Elbows are straight. You're going to take that left leg out, roll the toes under and press along through the leg. Elbows are straight. You're pointing your nose to that spot between your thumbs. You're pulling your tummy in. This is a very active pose. You're pressing so strongly through that leg that you're effortless on that right knee. Just another breath, kids. And now let's pick that leg up. Let's take it all the way over to the right side. Put your left toes down onto the floor, press strongly through the heel of your left foot. Please look over the top of your right shoulder. If it feels good, see if you can see that left heel. Point the heel upward, don't let it flop out. Then you're gonna take your leg back, wiggle your ankle, and then bring your knee back home. And then move your hips around. Go one way, go the other way. Relax your toes. Toes touch or knees apart. One last child's pose. So you're either going to stack those arms. If child's pose is like impossible on your knees, you can always sit on a chair and hug your belly to your thighs and hang over. You're getting that nice deep stretch in your lump for that way. All of this stuff can be adapted to the chair, even cat cow. Now we're gonna lift all the way back up. We're gonna stand up this morning. So if you do not wanna come up on bird on a perch, you know, come on up and I'll demonstrate the toe work for you. If you choose to, you do not have to turn. I'm only turning so you can see what I'm doing. We're sitting back in hero's pose. This is a normal transition that I try to get comfortable for all of you. This shouldn't be quote unquote a yoga pose. This is, should be a daily thing for yourself. Again, if you're standing up, go right ahead. 
You're gonna roll your toes under. Now we're gonna to torture those toes a little bit, stretching through the toes. If you want more, you open your heels. Stay here if you're on your knees. For my friends who have stood up already, you're going to stretch your toes by rolling the toes under and getting those stretch. Oh, you can't get out of the toe stretch. You can even take the leg across the other leg and stretch the toes. Now for my friends that are on your knees, folks, relax your toes, hips to heels, hero's pose. Remember, hero's pose might look like this, where you're going, I'm not putting my hips down. So there's something for everybody. Now one more time, kids on the floor, we're gonna roll the toes under. Now remember, if you can't get those hips back, but this is, it's too easy to stand up and do your toes, this is your in-between pose. This is the pose if you're working on it. Open those heels out and go, oh, I don't want to do this pose anymore. But we need to. So I'm only turning, just so you can see, the people on your knees, relax your toes, relieve them before we come up. We're going to come up and bird on a perch. Roll the toes under. We should always know how to get up off the floor easily because one day when we find ourselves on the floor and we can't get up, it shouldn't be decades since we learned how. This is the, one of the easiest ways to start to learn how to get up and down off the floor. This may just be it where you're playing with this. Some of you are already into the pose. Please practice this one. Maybe you have the pose where the ears are in alignment to the shoulders, shoulders are over the hips. Some of you are standing already. If you know we're going into forward fold, so if you're on the floor, the heels of your feet rest to the floor. If you're standing, meet us in forward fold. Everybody's looking at the heels of their feet. The knees are bent a lot. Your heels are out as wide as your pinky toes. Your belly and thighs are touching each other. Some of you have the chair and you're holding on to the chair or the coffee table. Some of you have your hands to the floor. We're all letting our head and shoulders hang. We're letting the belly and thighs touch each other. And even if you have a, nice, a belly, you're taking those eight legs out nice and wide. So the ribs and thighs still touch and your heels are out nice and wide. You're making a broad base of support. Shake your head. Now stay in forward fold if you can. We're going to take a deep breath in and let it out with a big sound. <sighs> Shake your head a bit. There are eight layers of tendons surrounding your spine. They get so doggone tight. Can we take another deep breath in and decompress them? <sighs> You're going to turn the palms of your hands out like wings. Your knees are bent. Your tummy is in and up. We're going to come up. Deep breaths in. Lift all the way up. Touch your hands right over your head. And once you've done that, you're going to bring your hands all the way down. Opening the heels of your hands out until the palms press down. Inhale. Lift the arms up. Touch your hands. Exhale, slowly press it down. Inhale, lift it up, touch your hands. Exhale, press it down. Now one last time, we're gonna inhale. Lift the arms all the way up and we're gonna bring our hands all the way down. Relax your shoulders. Now we're gonna rotate those fingers in, down all the way, to release your shoulders a little bit. I know some of your shoulders are way up here because you've worked so hard. Relax those shoulders. Start to move, and the more you do this, and do this all the time, you start to release the shoulders, the hands, the elbows. You're working into that carpal tunnel area. Some of you have, have issues with that, numbness in the hands. You don't have to walk around. I'm just kind of turning so you can see different positions. Now we're gonna point the fingers out in front of you. We're gonna reach the arms out. Open the palms up, spread your fingers. You're trying to get the edges of your arms to point in towards each other. 
Some of you, they just naturally touch. Most of us, they don't. Now, backs of your hands come together, shoot your fingertips out. Breathe into the back of those shoulders. Drop your hands down, open them out like a book. Breathe there. And the backs of your hands together, shoot your fingertips out. Breathe. Now we're gonna take our hands, we're gonna interlace our hands right behind our back. We're gonna press the knuckles to the floor, draw your shoulder blades together. Don't keep them wide, don't bend your elbows. Arms are straight, push down with your knuckles, take the hands back. But what you do when you do that, you tend to squeeze your butt muscles. We're gonna relax our butt muscles. Look at the heels of your feet, make sure they're open. Press back with your inner thighs, Pull your tummy in and up and that roots your tailbone down. Knuckles down, take the arms back, shoulder blades are drawn together. If it feels good, you're gonna look at that corner between the wall and the ceiling. If your neck feels better looking straight ahead, that's what you're doing. We are gonna come into forward fold again. You can always put your hands on your hips or your hands in your back pocket if you choose. So we're gonna take the hands back Pull the tummy in, bend your knees. See, it keeps your, your back in this position. You're gonna put your tummy right onto your thighs. Then you're gonna bow over your knees. If you can, you're gonna lift the hands off your lower back and up to the ceiling. Maybe your hands are on your hip, but everybody's head is dangling. Try to get that sensation that your skull is being drawn down by get gravity being suspended by a spring. Shake it a little bit, you got a bobble head. This may take decades, probably not longer. Then drop your hands down, shake your head. The neck is so hard to loosen up. That's why we're hanging here. Move your shoulders a little bit. Now we're gonna come up folks. Turn the palms up. We're gonna inhale, bend the knees. Use your tummy, pull it in, come all the way up, touch your hand. We're gonna interlace our hands. As long as your shoulders feel good, if they're hurting, put your hands on your hips. Press the palms up to the ceiling or palm trees. You do not have to come up on your tippy toes, but if you choose to, come up on the tippy toes, but we're all gonna press the palms of the hands up to the ceiling Take a couple of breaths. <sighs> On your own exhale, lower the heels of your feet towards the floor. We're gonna do it two more times. Inhale, come up. Now remember, you can just press the heels of your hands up. You don't have to balance. Are you breathing? And then we're gonna bring the heels down to the floor. Let's do it one more time. Take a deep breath in. Press the heels of your hands up. Keep breathing. Open your hips. That's hard to do while you're on your toes. Pressing back with your inner thighs. Tummy in. Now, on your own exhale, lower the heels down. Release your arms. Roll your shoulders. So we're gonna take our legs out comfortably wide. If you have a, a, a yoga mat, that's great. If not, you can pretty much do this on a rug. Um, we're gonna turn the toes inward, heels out. We're gonna put our hands on our hip crease. We're gonna play with some warriors this morning. We're gonna lift your, le um, let's go, call, I'm gonna call it your left toes. Turn your left toes to the short end of your yoga mat. Open your hips to the long end of your yoga mat or towards the center. We're gonna breathe there. We're gonna do this a couple of times to each side. We're gonna bring the toes inward. We're gonna turn your right toes to the short end of your mat. Open your hips to the long side of your mat. This opens your hips. This rotates the femur bone in your hip socket. We're gonna lift the toes up and go to the other side turning the toes to the short end, opening your hips to the long side or to the middle. We're gonna turn those toes in and one more time. 
go over to the other side. Opening those hips, feeling the opening and the rotation in your hip socket, breathing. And then we're gonna turn those toes in. Now we're gonna go into our warriors. So we're gonna rotate the toes out to the short end of your mat or to the side there. Open your hips to the long end or to the center. We're going to tilt in our hip crease. Keep the legs straight. This is part of Trigonasana, triangle pose. So we're not coming into the pose yet. We will press into your hip crease. Even if you know this pose well, it is so wonderful to play with this. You're aligning yourself over your leg here. You're being squeezed between two walls. Your hands are at your hip crease. You're pressing into that hip crease. You're looking either up to the ceiling or look downward to the floor. Try to find that sensation. And you may not go very far. Try to find that sensation where you're being squeezed between the walls. One more breath, kids. And then inhale. Let's lift all the way back up. We're gonna turn the toes inward. Let's go to the other side. Lift the toes up. Open them to the short side. Open your hips to the long end of your mat or to the center. Now we're just bending at that hip crease, just teetering in it. Feel where it is. Most of us get locked up and can't even, don't even know we bend here. It's not just at the waist, we bend right here at the hip crease. Now, once you come into it over that leg, you're just gonna come no further than it feels safe where you're directly over the leg. Make sure the toes are pointing in that same direction. You're either looking up to the ceiling or you're looking down at that foot, possibly at your right foot. You don't have, to, we only have two legs, so we won't be too confused. You're gonna press into that hip crease so you feel that. Are you breathing? It's a baby triangle. Now we're gonna come all the way back up. We're gonna turn the toes inward. One more time, we're gonna go to the other side. Open your hips to the long end of the mat. Foot is pointing to the short end. Feel balanced here. Don't be in a hurry. This helps strengthen our legs, helps balance us. Now, once you have this, put your hands on your hip crease. We're gonna come either into the same exact pose or we're gonna go a little deeper. That's your choice, that's the beauty of yoga. You can put your hands right at that hip crease and press in. Just take yourself to where it's natural. Well, you may only be a little bit. Some of you have your torso parallel to the floor, but we're over the leg, we're being squeezed between two walls, and either our hands are on our hip, looking up to the ceiling, or looking down at the foot, or we can open the arms too. You can, we're not, pressing into the legs. The legs are completely supporting us. The hands are just here to open the chest. Some of you put your hand to the floor, some of it's to the shin, some of it's behind the knee, some of you have your hands to the hip. Doesn't matter, be strong in it. One more breath, kids. And then inhale, let's lift all the way back up. We're gonna lift the toes up, turn them inward, one more time to the other side. Turn them out towards the short end. Open your hips. Our legs are straight. If you want, you can kind of teeter into it and feel it. Some of you are coming into a baby triangle, which is perfect. Some of you want to explore it, being squeezed between two walls or looking at the foot or the ceiling. If it feels good, you're opening your arms. You're reaching that top hand up to the ceiling and spreading your fingers. You're not pushing on the leg. Your legs support you. Your arms are just opening and breathing into it. Maybe a baby one, maybe a full one, more, one more breath, kids. And then with an inhale, we're gonna lift up. Turn your foot inward. And we're gonna heel toe, heel toe until we can step or hop it together. So we're gonna come all the way down. We always come down in a squatting pose, either back with bird on a perch or with the Hindu squat. This morning we're doing the Hindu squat. So the toes are out, heels are inward. And we're gonna rest our hands either on our thighs, not on the knees, thighs. Hands could be on a chair or your uh, coffee table. You could either have your elbows here. 
Maybe you go, oh, I could maybe get here, or maybe you're holding on to furniture. Some of you go, oh, I love this pose. This is how I garden. And this is so good for your back, your digestion, and you're lifting your collarbones up and you're breathing. You're looking forward or you're looking down. And again, you may be here, you may be here, you may be, oh my God, I'm coming down to the floor. If you do come down to the floor before us, please lay on your tummy and stack your hands one on top of the other, forehead resting on your hands. We're gonna meet you there. One more breath, and we always practice this again, unless you have serious knee issues. But if you haven't really hurt your knees that badly and they're just stiff and tight, practice this. Please come all the way down any way you would like, and we're all gonna meet each other with our bellies down onto the floor. We're gonna stack the hands one on top of the other. We're gonna put the forehead down onto our hands and we're letting the shoulders relax. We're letting the heels of your feet pop out. No muscle energy. Wiggle your hips, make them feel like jello. Don't have the heels inward and the toes outward. This is not good for you. We're letting the heels flop out, toes inward. Readjust your thighs and your knees maybe and wiggle them for just a moment. Please don't be bashful, nobody's looking at you. Now, if it feels good, some of you are gonna come up on your elbows. Some of you go, oh, this is not good for my back. Listen to this. The more you play with this, it does come back. So maybe you're right here with your head, head on your hands. Some of you may be somewhere in between. So remember, I hope you have toys. So, and they don't have to be yoga toys, blankets. Uh, towels are wonderful in, in uh, your home practice. So maybe you roll up a blanket or a towel and you stick it right underneath the chest there. For women, it's under the bra line in the front. And then if you wanted to, you could just let your head rest on your hands. That's somewhere in between sphinx pose and head down on the floor. It's perfectly fine because you're still getting the back bend in any of those poses. Some of your, your neck hurts. So maybe you wanna grab a pillow or a yoga block and stick it between your hands and let your head rest. Now the reason why we're doing this pose and staying here, why are we staying here? To reestablish that lumbar curve. We all sit on it. We watch TV, we sit in our office chairs incorrectly we're not sitting on our sick bones and we sit on the sacrum we lose the curve out of our lumbar spine and then we wonder why our back hurts our back is not supposed to be rounded forward it's not supposed to be straight it's supposed to have this beautiful s curve in order to be healthy <coughs> most of us lose the lumbar curve most of us over curve the neck so with that being said, please make sure your neck is comfortable. We're gonna hold it for maybe about 10 or 15 more breaths. Don't count them. Everybody breathes differently. So we're gonna stretch the neck while we're here though. So your nose is gonna to point to the center. You're gonna exhale and just look to one side. Your nose could be pointing to the floor. Maybe your neck feels fabulous and it's lifted, your nose is lifted up and you're looking over to the, to the side. Doesn't matter. But you are gonna keep your belly relaxed, your butt muscles relaxed, and breathe. Then you're gonna inhale, you're gonna bring your nose to center and exhale, look over the opposite shoulder. Again, nose is lower high doesn't matter, relax your butt muscles, your tummy muscles. And then you're gonna gently, on an inhale, bring your nose to center. Now we're all gonna bring our arms by your side, put your palms of your hands up, put your cheek on the floor, if your neck hurts, get your blanket and put it right underneath your cheek. Don't wad it up, just lightly fold it to your two or three times high, so it just lifts your head a little bit off the floor. Now, before we go anywhere, let's take two deep breaths like this. I want you to feel the rise and fall of your body with the breathing.
Now we're going to bend our knees. Crisscross your ankles. So while we're crisscrossing the ankles, did you notice the body rising and falling with the breath? Often, we that's why we move with the breath. The breath helps us move, helps, <clears throat> helps us rise up and down. Now, keep your <clears throat> feet up, turn your head to the opposite side, and drop your heels from side to side. And notice this twist the waist to help release that lower back bend that we just did. Now we're going to breathe again. Drop the feet down. Let the heels of the feet flop out. Readjust your knees and your thighs. Arms by your side, palms up. Two deep breaths. Observe the rise and fall. Placing your hands underneath your shoulders. Bring your nose to the center and with an inhale, lift yourself up and bring yourself in child's pose. And if child's pose on your knees is a no-no, roll on your back, hug your knees to your chest, nose to bent knees. If you're on your back, nose to bent knees, bring your head to your knees for two, two to three deep breaths. If you're on your knees, please take several breaths, letting your hip heels rest towards the floor or towards your hips rest towards your heels. Either the pillow can be between your thighs and your calves, or the hips can be resting down just towards those heels. Please take another breath there. We're gonna meet each other sitting onto our bottoms with our legs out in front of us. So once those legs are out, move your ankles around. Get those circles in your ankle. And I hope you're doing this all the time. Separate your feet and go in opposite directions with each other. Go one way around, go the other way and then flex and point your feet a few times. Flex and point, flex and point. Now we're gonna turn, and I forgot to tell you kids, if you needed a blanket under your hips or a pillow, get it underneath there, because you don't want your back rounded. You wanna be able to set up easily. Press through the heels of your feet. Now, it, it took me a while to wanna do this. Press the thighs, the inner flesh down, and pull the flesh out from behind your thigh. You're rotating the femur bone in the hip socket, just like we did in triangle, how we were turning the foot. So we're gonna pull the abundance out from underneath of us and turn the toes up. Do you feel your sit bones on the floor? That's how we should be sitting. Press through the heels, spread the toes wide, pull back on your pinky toe side towards your knee. Pushing out through your big toe ball mount, you should feel that all the way up into your hips. Now, keeping the feet upward, the, the ankles up, only your toes, curl them down. This could cause cramping. That's okay. Still does for me. And then relax your ankles and do those circles again. Go one way, then the other way. Separate your feet. Go those circles in opposite directions. That's that mind-body coordination. And if you haven't done this in a while, you haven't played with me in a while, Maybe it's hard to find that again. Now point your ankles out. Get those ankles turned out. Point the toes to the floor. Now we're gonna keep our ankles just like this. Keep them like that, only the toes turn up. Spread the toes wide. Push out through your big toe ball mount. Pull back on your pinky toe side. Feeling that? Arches, tops of the feet. Ooh. and work your ankles around. Flex and point your feet. Let's twist. We're gonna take our left leg, but you cannot cross that foot over your right thigh. It goes to the inner part of your right thigh. We're going to take our right hand and hold our left knee, or we're gonna hug the knee. We're gonna pull body parts out of the way and open your chest 
to the left side. Now we're gonna put our left hand right on our collarbone. We're gonna use our elbow to point to the left. Use that elbow to point out to the left. Once you go as far as you can, don't go further than it feels good. You're gonna take that left arm and unfold it. Spread your left hand wide. Try to look into your left hand. Now, some of you are only twisting a little bit. Some of you are way back, that's okay. Keep breathing. Pull that left knee to the right side. One more breath like that. And then turn the palm of your left hand to the floor. Drop it down, either teacup fingers or flat hand. Pull your left knee to the right side. Look as far to the left as it feels comfortable to you. One more breath, kids. Then you're gonna maintain your twist. Keep your hands where they are. Please slowly turn your head. Look over to the right as far as it feels safe. Now, some of you just may be looking out to the left. Some of you are looking over your right shoulder or looking just at your right foot. Please remember each pose is different on each individual. Breathe here. And then you're gonna gently come back to the center. We're gonna keep the leg crossed because we're gonna now twist to the other side. You're gonna take the uh, right toes and turn them straight up to the ceiling. We use muscle energy, we, use, we lock the body. Turn the right toes up. You're gonna take your left arm. You're gonna spread your left fingers wide, put them inside to the left knee, whether the foot is inside or crossed, it's perfectly fine. You keep this arm straight and you're gonna press your left elbow into the knee, the knee presses back for that isometric action there. Right hand goes behind you, flat hand or teacup finger. Set up tall, squeeze your tummy, look over your right shoulder. Use that left arm to press into the left knee. The left knee presses back. You can use that to open your chest and ratchet deeper into that twist to the right. We're gonna maintain that, keep those right toes up. And we're gonna slowly turn your head. Look at your right toe with your left hand reaching towards it or look over the left shoulder. Are you breathing? Now folks, let's come back to the center. We're gonna rock that baby. Pick the foot up in your hand or your elbow. It may be way out here. Maybe you're hugging it close to you. Maybe you got your foot over your head. Whatever's just right for you. Rock that baby. And then we're gonna put our foot to the inside of our thigh. If you need an extra blanket underneath of it uh, or a pillow, go right ahead. If your knee's blown out, we can't do that. Take it out to the side. We're gonna focus with our right leg out in front of us. Our toes are relaxed, but we're gonna bend at the knee so that you can feel your hip crease. Hands on each side of your um, right leg. You're gonna take a deep breath, looking directly down at your foot, not down your nose, look down at your foot. So you stretch your neck, belly and thighs touch, and you're gonna allow yourself to bow over your right leg. Now your knee may be bent a whole lot. Maybe your leg is straight, but even if it's straight or bent, the common denominator is your belly and thighs must be touching. So you're bending at the hip crease, not your waist. You're not getting the full advantage of the pose if, there's a, if you're bending at the waist. This is not the pose setting up and just pointing our nose to our thigh or our knee. It's getting tummy and thighs touching. We hold this for several breaths, just like we did our Sphinx pose because we're going into connective tissue. Now kids, very slowly, gently come all the way back up. Once you do, you may have a little altered state feeling that comes along with that pose. Lift that left knee up and then send the left leg out. Work your ankles, go one way, go the other way. Flex and point your foot, feet, your footies a couple of times. So let's twist to the other side. I remember all the poses, don't worry. You're gonna take your right foot, either goes to the inner thigh or it crosses over the left leg. 
keep the left toes relaxed. We do not walk this pose. Left hand holds your right knee or hugs the knee. First, you're gonna pull your body parts, twist to the right, open your chest to the right. Once you establish your seat here, right hand goes on the collarbone. You're gonna use your elbow to point you. Like an arrow, point that elbow back behind you as far as it goes, unfold that right arm, spread your fingers. Do you wanna look into the palm of your right hand or are you looking out anywhere to the right? One more breath, reach, 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 spread the fingers, turn the palm down, bring it down to the floor. Flat hand, finger tucks, doesn't matter. We're gonna gently look as far to the right and we're pulling that right knee to the left side. Doesn't matter how far you twist, it matters how much you're pulling and stretching into the hip. Please take another breath there and then slowly turn your head Look as far to the left as it feels safe to you. Now we're gonna unfold and unwind, come back to the middle. We're gonna keep the legs exactly where they are, but we're engaging them. Turn your left toes up. Notice how you set up differently. Spread the toes out wide, pull back on that pinky toe. That should reorganize the whole body, lining it up. Now we're gonna bring the left hand anywhere behind us, Open the chest, right arm is straight. Spread your fingers, it does make a difference just like the foot does. The arm presses into the leg, the leg presses back. We're gonna sit up tall and we're gonna look over the left shoulder. We're gonna use that right arm like a gate. Open the chest, open the gate up. Look over your left shoulder, spread your fingers. Keep pressing that right arm into the right knee. The right knee presses back, you should feel a lot of heat and tension in the body. Keep breathing, folks. We're gonna keep the twist and slowly turn our head, looking at our left toes. Maybe our right fingers are reaching to it. Maybe we look all the way to the right. And then we're gonna unwind. Pick that foot up in your hand or your elbow. Let's rock that baby. Oh. Let's get that forward fold, stretching your back stretching your entire back side body. So you're gonna take the um, blanket and stick it under your right knee if you're having difficulties, foot to the inner thigh. And of course, if your knee is hurting, the leg goes out to the right side. We're folding straight over uh, your left leg. Bend your left knee a lot or a little. Hip crease, remember that hip crease we played with early? Belly to thigh, if you've got a belly, pull everything to the, to the inside. We're working on your left side, arms on each side of your left leg. You're not using your arms to pull into it. No, they're not coming to the party. Allow yourself to bow over the leg. Take a couple of breaths there, letting your shoulders relax, letting your head relax. Take just a couple of breaths, stretching into those hamstrings. <sighs> Ever so gently, rise all the way back up. Once you come all the way back up, we're gonna take that leg and stretch it out with your left. Work your ankles around. So we're gonna grab our yoga strap. We're just gonna quickly stretch into the, the legs before we come into our finishing poses. Um, we're gonna lay all the way down, put your strap by your side, point your toes, and reach your arms out over the head, hollow body stretch. I can't believe how fast this class went by. Is it just me? Now turn the toes up, reach through the heels of your feet to your fingertips. And now we're gonna hug your right knee into your chest. You know, we always work the core. It's amazing how strong you get every week by doing this. Stack your hands behind your knee, squeeze your knee off. Turn all of your toes straight up to the ceiling, pressing through the heels of both feet. You're gonna lift your left leg up two inches. Bring your nose to your bent knee, your right knee. 
Now, if your neck hurts, put your head on the floor. If it feels good, take that left arm and reach it next to your left thigh or over it. Breathe there. And then let it all flop to the floor. You're gonna grab that strap. Let's put it around your right foot and send your right leg up to the ceiling. Breathe into the back of that right leg. Now, we've already stretched those hamstrings, so they should be nice and stretchy. Remember, the leg does not have to be to the ceiling. If it needs to be less, that's fine. You're dropping your left arm out, comma. Drop your right leg to the right side to where it's comfortable. You could put something behind it if you need to support it. Breathe there, breathe into the groin muscles. We didn't get those groin muscles enough. A little bit with that triangle. One more breath, kids. You're either looking to the ceiling or looking over your left shoulder. Some of you need to look to the right. Make sure the neck is happy. Now, we're going to bring our right leg up to the ceiling and out to the right side. Get those circles in the hips like we did the circles in our ankles. This is an essential rotation in your hip. Please go one way several times before you change the direction and go the other way around several times. Now we're gonna bring the leg back to the center. Both hands are gonna grab the strap, pull it gently towards you. Now the left hand's gonna have charge of the strap, right arm rests out comfortable, palm up. Pull your right leg across the body Look straight up to the ceiling or look over your right shoulder. Take several breaths there. Soften that left knee if you want to twist a little deeper. And if you don't want to twist very deep, bend your right knee and maybe put a prop underneath that leg or make it your pose. Don't ever twist any deeper than it feels safe. Now with an inhale, let's lift all the way back up. Now, we're gonna take this strap off your foot, support it with your hands or not, work your ankle, and then slowly or quickly bring your leg all the way down to the floor. Once it lands, reach your arms out over your head, point your toes, hollow body stretch, stretch from fingertips to your toenails. Turn the toes up to the ceiling, press through the heels of your feet to your fingertips. Now, hug behind your left knee. Hands go behind it. Squeeze the knee off. Turn all your toes up to the ceiling. Lift your right leg up two inches. Bring your nose to your left knee only if the neck feels good. Reach your right arm over your right side like you're going to grab your right big toe or next to it. Pull that tummy in. This really strengthens your body up. Now drop it to the floor. Grab your strap. Put it around your left foot and stretch the back of your left leg. Just for a moment. Now let's get into the groin muscles. Left hand has your strap, right arm rests out comfortable, palm up. Let the left leg go out to the left side. Look straight up to the ceiling, look over your right shoulder, maybe to, maybe to the left side. Maybe you have a pillow underneath that left leg or you have it resting on a coffee table. <sighs> now we're going to bring the leg up to the ceiling and out to the left side in circles. Go one way several times before you go the other way around several times. Loosen that hip up. Now we're gonna bring the leg back to center. Both hands grab your strap, gently pull the leg. Now drop that left arm out, palm up. Drop the right, I'm sorry, left leg to the right side. You can have the leg straight, you can have your knee bent using props or not. Look straight to the ceiling or over your left shoulder, please. And then you're going to bring your leg back to the center. Both hands grab that strap, pull the leg gently towards you. 
Then you're gonna take this strap off your foot, support the leg with your hands or not. Work your ankle, go one way, go the other way. Slowly or quickly, bring a straight left leg down or bend your knee and slide it out. Once you do, reach your arms out over your head, point your toes, hollow body. Turn the toes up, heels of the feet to your fingertips. And when you're ready, please hug behind both knees. Either bring your nose to your bent knees together, knees wide apart. Your head doesn't feel, neck doesn't feel good, you don't need to bring your head up. Please take two deep breaths, stretching your back, pulling those knees in. And then we're gonna rest our head down onto the floor with or without your hands. Take both knees around like you're drawing a circle on the ceiling with both knees going one way, going the other way, just a few times. Get that lower back loosened. This hurts, stop it. Separate your knees and get those circles in opposite directions, just like we did a second ago. Feels different when they're moving together. Go one way and then go the other way. Now, before we lay our legs in Shavasana, we're gonna put our legs in relaxation pose. Knees touch, feet are wide apart. Get them as wide apart as you can. Have the heels of your feet up higher. And we're just gonna let the arms rest out and see if you can let your entire back melt on the floor. Take a deep breath. <sighs> One more. <sighs> Point one knee towards the ceiling while you press the left knee down or the opposite knee down, I'm sorry. Pick that knee up and go to the other side. Gently go from side to side, slow or super extra slow. Breathe there. Feel that rotation in your hip socket. For some of you, it's just a little light movement. For some of you, it's very deep. Now gently walk your feet and your knees in together. Place a pillow or something underneath your legs. Let your legs flop out. Let the arms rest out, palms up. Take a nice deep breath in. Let it out with a great big sigh. <sighs> Adjust the body. If you have an eye pillow, put it on. If you need a blanket on, throw it on your body. Take another deep breath in and let it go. <sighs> Take inventory of yourself. Is there any discomfort, dis-ease? Is there a thought or an emotion that needs to leave? Take a deep breath in. Sip a little more breath in. Now blow it out hard. Let that discomfort, that dis-ease, that thought, that emotion, let it leave. Let's allow the nervous system to take a step down. Let's make the sound of ah and mm. Take a deep breath in. Let it out with ah. Let's take another deep breath in. Let it out with mm. Let's 
let's try it again. Take a breath in. Ah. One more delicious sound. Mm. Notice that vibration. Left on your lips. Let that vibration reverberate through the entire body. Imagine every cell of your body is able to open up. Let every cell of your body savor that delicious sensation. Find the sound of your own breath. Your breath is right there at the back of your throat. Hear the breath deepening. Hear your breath flowing like a wave flowing through you from head to toe. Allow that cleansing wave to flow from fingertip to finger. Notice that breath flowing from skin deep down into the bones. Let each breath soothe your body. Notice how each breath can relax and release the whole mind. Bring your awareness to the temperature of the breath flowing through your nose. Is it warm or is it cool? Is the right side of your nostril breathing in deeper than the left? Is the left breathing in deeper than the right? Let's tap into this reflex by breathing in through your left nostril. No hands, out through your right. Inhaling through your left nostril. Exhaling through the right. Real or imagined, it doesn't matter. Inhaling through your left nostril. Exhaling through your right. Imagine you're experiencing this circular breath. Inhaling through the left. Exhaling through the right. Practicing breath regulation. Breathing in through your right nostril and exhaling out through your left now. Inhale through your right nostril. Exhale through the left. Imagine this circular breathing in the opposite direction. Inhaling through right. Exhale through left.
and then just let the breath be. Start to bring your awareness back into the room. Hearing the sounds of the room. Hearing the sounds in your home. Notice the sounds outside, seeping inside. Start to wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, wiggle those ankles and wiggle your wrists. Take a nice deep breath in with any extra stretch you'd like. Bring yourself back to the body more fully, more completely. Only when you're ready, folks. Draw your knees up. Give your knees a hug and a squeeze. It helps bring you back. And then when you're ready, roll to the right if it's good. Roll to the left if it feels better. Stay on your side for just a moment. Only when you're ready, come on up to a seated position. We're gonna do lion's roar before we go to help cleanse the lymphatic system. It stretches our neck. It stretches everything from our tongue all the way around our breathing muscles. It's great for TMJ. This is a wonderful practice for us to do right now with all this crazy stuff going on. So let your shoulders relax down. Please turn your head to one side. Doesn't matter which side. Open your mouth wide. Stick your tongue out and go. Close the mouth and gently shake your head, yes. With an inhale, bring your nose to center. Exhale to the opposite side. Open your mouth wide, stick your tongue out long and go. Close your mouth, shake your head gently, yes. And one last time, bring your nose to center. Open your mouth wide, use your eyes to look upward and go. Close the mouth, tuck the chin to the chest. Little, no movement. Bring both shoulders to your ears. Lift your head up, relax the shoulders back and down. Put your hands together. Let the thumbs rest against your heart. If you choose to own with us this morning, we're going to pronounce it A-U-M, Aum. Close your eyes and find a deep breath in. Aum. Namaste.